today we have presentations of uh, four groups. Uh, come to stage, you are being recorded here and here. Our sensor, our, the sensor will track the rotation data, process it through Unity here, and then Unity will send it to the Jetson Nano so that it does things. <laughs> and so let's get it running. Yeah. So right now I've opened the connection on the end, and next I'm going to open up Unity so that it runs. So there, I'm controlling the hand. You can see, like, as I rotate my wrists up and down, it moves. If I close the hand, it closes it. If I close the thumb, it closes it. If I open it, it does that. I can do the hook and horn sign. There you go. I can, uh, let's see, do fancy finger, just index. Um, and I can play a game of. Rock, paper, scissors, yes, money. Yes, play rock, paper, scissors. So, all right. All right, let's see. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. Ah, uh, I beat you. The hand wins. Okay. <laughs> one, yeah. one, two, three. Yeah. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. <laughs> there you go. I guess two out of three wins. Yeah, two out of three wins. And take some things. Take some things. And I can move the thumb a little so that it's like an aggressive. Now it's stolen from me. Can I have those back, please? Yeah, I can okay. have those back. There you go. Thank you. You can have them back. <laughs> and so, yeah, if people want to play with it, you're free yeah. to play with it. That's crazy. And now, pull Take your left. Yeah, and now you can play with it. That makes you nervous. <laughs> 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 can I do, like, little fingers? Yeah, so you just have to play with it if you want to do, like, the this or that or this. The, th the thumb pr plays pretty well. Yeah, the class, thumb plays so, well. So no rude gestures. Yeah, I was going to say. Gestures, no more gestures. <laughs> I was you not know, planning on that. Safety. No, like if this equals it, yeah. Don't. No, no, they don't have that for the. That's crazy. That's something to add in a future software update. I know, the thumb is wild. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. And, and the thumb was the hardest one to figure out because the geometry of the thumb is like weirder than. And so it actually took me like a lot of drawing vectors, seeing like what I could use in the hands to actually. That it rotates in two different directions. So this is the first stage. Um, we got it a little bit slower just for safety. So well, let's put the hands on there for work. Um, and then it also goes uh, along this axis. And then finally the pulley moves the, the end arm up and down. One, one sec, hand is on the way. <laughs> and the hand will be functional. Are you going to move two motors at the same time? Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. What made y'all think to combine them? Like, how did that happen? <laughs> so about two weeks ago, me and Walter looked at our arm. Yeah. Looked at our hand. And you said, like, <laughs> 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 it was like, it was it was, it was also like, we didn't have anything on the end here. We were going to potentially put like some sort of gripper to pick stuff up. Yeah. And, and they were like passing around their foot. we like, yo. <laughs> nice. So. One sec, I'm the one delaying everything. Sorry about that, everyone. We uh, created this adapter about 20 hours ago. Oh, really? And then we took it this morning and the screw holes were perfect, so. And now it's on. Cool. Oh my gosh, this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make them horns down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got. O
Professor, Professor, Professor. Oh yeah, okay, can talk. Oh yeah, yeah, awesome. Oh yeah, oh. Sorry, sorry. There you go. If you look over there, as you can see, it's closing, and the pressure on the needle is going up. And now I'm going to reverse it, and uh, the pressure in the needle has gone down, and now, come on, baby, uh, now it's opening. So let's try and grab that cup. As you can see, it's making horrific, horrific noises. <laughs> it, yeah. Is it working? Is it grabbing? Yeah. yeah. And we can. So and uh, so as you can see, if you can see uh, the pressure. On the little needle is kind of is kind of up. Now it's gone down as I as we release the pressure to so drop the cup. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. We still have a few more things to talk about. Essentially, the prototype you have two servo motors serving as your input, and then you have these two pulleys that work together in order to pre tension the system with a really changing the output. But on those different configurations, what it changes is how much perceived stiffness you have at the output. And the way they design is, it's created, you get uh, more compliance when the motors are less, are not co-contracted. And I brought some parts that I, stops the motor frame from rotating relative to the table is going to be taking away that torque pressure. It's going to ruin the torque pressure. So everything has to be through that torque sensor. Uh, so that's our only rigid attachment is as drawn in the SOLIDWORKS version there, that frame at the bottom. But as you guessed, that's not very stiff. And so I've got this beautiful gold ring around it. Um, this has three ball bearings in this kind of triangle. And they roll around the outside frame of the motor. And it works way better than I thought it would. <laughs> I was expecting like, like a threshold, like the ball bearing doesn't start rolling until you put this much, and so like have some like zero point where it's like only measuring zero all the time. I know, it, it was at least you know, by hand at least, the kind of torques I was putting on it, it was immediately sensitive. So this has really worked, I recommend this design. I, I saw it in the robot, I took the torque sensor out of it and I kind of recreated it, so fortunately not mine. So uh, spent a bunch of time with Snap contact support reviving it, getting it back so they could use modern firmware, some of the software we're working on so you can configure it. Otherwise, it was just going to be permanently stuck in whatever it was last configured for. Um, ah, yes, and it's tuned with the software that Snappycon provides. It's a screenshot. Is, it's a nice web app. And you basically set your pin controller parameters to test them out. And you do things like limits on cor torque, current, speed, that sort of stuff. It's a nice little application. Um, uh, next thing to motor. So that's uh, it's a black thing hidden in here. Probably can't see it very well. It's getting up the top. Uh, it's very similar to the ones we made, of course. It takes three phase power and gives torque. Um, this is a QMARS motor. Um, it's a little bit fast and a little bit weak to be a knee motor, the way it is. Um, it has a 9 to 1 reduction inside. This I had open at one point, so this is the planetary gearbox inside. Uh, ideally, I think it would have had another 3 or 4 to 1 on top of this, like multiplier on this. So this is what we had. So it's a little weak for it to be a knee, but close enough for a, for a project, I think. There we go. All right. So first, pouring this up to uh, 90 degrees, and then it starts following this trajectory. It is going into oh. crazy oscillation oh. mode, because it was uh, hitting the table here. When I was holding the weight vertically, it, uh, it uh, got in the way. Anyway, so now it's going to 90 degrees, and now it's going to start following the trajectory that's been pre-chosen. Uh, this is random. Um, so it's choosing a random velocity, random amounts of movement, uh, goes back and forth. I started off very conservatively with like 10 second trajectories with my, already with my stopping. Uh, and then by the end I did a 15 minute trajectory and didn't pay attention to it. Um, <laughs> because it mostly works when it doesn't hit the table. Um, and so this is the kind of data I recorded. This is actually tuned, turned down a little bit from what I actually recorded because I didn't want it to do what it did in the, in the demo. But um, it was slightly faster when I did this for real. So I think this trajectory is 
probably almost over. I forgot how long it is. It's just not a long one. I wanted it to be already tested so the class, yeah, so I just went back down and it's going to turn off. That was good. If you're going to keep this simple kind of layout, 3D was the way to go, apparently. I switched to, uh, I had a dropout, so a regular weight polarization and a uh, better activation function. For my so this is mine. This is the one that's better. So what does it look like? Make a prediction. It's very noisy. So this is 40 minutes of data or something like that. But blue is actual, red is the prediction. This was really noisy and didn't make any sense. Uh, but if you zoom in, this is 50 seconds, so a little less than a minute. Blue is the actual, red is the predicted using my model. And so there actually is something happening. Right? It is falling. I feel pretty good about this. This, this graph made me feel good. Um, so let's do some actual metrics. Uh, so mean squared error, um, the regression, which is one data point, not very good. Regression with four seconds of history, much better. The ETH study actually worse than just a big regression. And then mine, way, way better than all of the others. <laughs> Uh, you can switch, I like correlation too, I don't know how many people do, but I like correlation, same story, same ordering, uh, same ranking. I get, you know, mid 80s correlation with my, so I was happy with that. And then I went to cumulative torque. This is, this is this morning, but I decided that cumulative torque was going to be important. Now, so I was ready to show how great mine was going to be. What this graph shows instead is that in the, in the test data, this is all out of sample data, there was a negative bias in the, in the actual data, so negative torque overall. Uh, and my model predicted positive torque. So did the ETH model, but you know, the two neural networks predicted positive drift. Uh, and I was very upset that it was doing the wrong thing. Um, so I delved into why, and uh, somewhere in the middle of the data collection hours that I did you know, a few days ago, uh, the kind of baseline torque that the sensor was repeating, it never, never went with zero, right? It's always got like some number it's giving. The baseline shifted from being positive to negative. <laughs> and so as it happens, the, the training validations test split that I chose, most of the training data came from before the change, and most of the <laughs> test and validation data came from after the change. And so they are not consistent. Mm -hmm. And that is annoying, and if I had more time, I would try to either resplit it or capture new data that didn't have that or something. In the absence of that, I have taken the mean out of the, all of these, so they're just detrending them. The same lines, just taking the trend out, so they all end up at zero. And this is a great picture. This is what I want to show the first time. Uh, it shows my, mine is the green one. And it, it, look at the shape. Look at it. It's falling all the valleys, all the peaks. It's great. <laughs> Purple is the, is the ETH study. It's pretty good. And this one, I, in my opinion, shows that the regression is, is horrible. All of it. It's a physical four second history. It's really not making much of a prediction at all. Um, so uh, I think this is a great picture. I feel very good about this one. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of that, that um, offset. Um, so we're going to do some future work. Um, this was a 400 watt version of the um, drive, which meant that we couldn't even drive the motor at its full power. It could have done 1,000 watts. Um, I don't have a 1,000 watt drive. And so I did have to limit the velocities of currents quite a bit. I was hitting the current limit constantly as I did all of this. Uh, and so I'd want a higher power drive to drive this motor to its limits. I would like it attached to a robot leg, because that's kind of what it's designed to do. Just swing around the weight is not really useful data for anything. Uh, and then somehow in the torque sensing amplifying range, I need to get higher frequency data that's not so noisy. And then the analysis side, um, well, I would fix the, the train test validation split to be more fair, apparently. Uh, but I also wanted to try a transformer model. Uh, I don't have experience with that, and uh, I just couldn't get it to work in time. But I still think there's something there because everyone loves transformers these days. Yes. <laughs> uh, so to summarize what I accomplished, <laughs> I worked on the system. <laughs> I've got mostly recycled parts that Dr. Sentis had around. Um, I figured out what they were, I put them together, I fixed a synapticon, I learned can open over Ethercat, um, and it works, it moves. All these parts connected together, which I was very happy with. I managed to perform the experiments to capture the data, I replicated the study that we're based on, and I've made one that I think is an improvement, but very obviously inspired by the, uh, the actuator now. Thank you.